Hey everyone, I am super excited about this video because we're going to be using some items that could be considered trash. Of course, they are definitely items that can be recycled and we do recycle in this house, but I have been saving some of these items to do this video with. Now, I've tried my best to only use products on these projects that were accessible to everyone that were either free items, items from the Dollar Tree, or paint that you can purchase within reason at your local uh, Walmart or even Hobby Lobby. Not any very expensive paints or products. And I used the paints in a way to show you how you can use them as you would a wax or a glaze or higher end products. So I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that I did serve it well. Now, with that being said, let's get on into this video. This first project is jars. So if you have pickle jars, save them or spaghetti jars, any kind of jars really. I have started saving mine a while back and I just painted these two in some black chalk paint. Now these did have labels on them and you can get a lot of the glue off, but sometimes you can't. Don't stress too much about that because the imperfections are gonna be covered up with paint and things and it's just not gonna be that noticeable. So I put two coats of chalk paint on here. Now I'm using the Folk Art white chalk paint. The other is the Folk Art black chalk paint. I'm not sure what the black's called, but it's black. Now I'm just using this brush to make some round white circles. They don't have to be perfect. Remember these projects are handmade and we want them to reflect that. I'm just gonna put a couple coats of this chalk paint and make a couple of these white circles and we're gonna make these into little snowman faces. I was inspired by some black jars I saw on Pinterest. They're, they're not quite the same as what I did see, but I'm making them my own. <coughs> Once we let this dry, we're going to go in with some of that black chalk paint and paint just some little beady looking eyes. There's lots of different eyes you can put on uh, snowmen. I just chose these because I like these cute little eyelashes just that just pop out from the side. Now we're going to go ahead and use some a couple different oranges from my acrylic paint, just those little bottles that you get at Walmart. I'm using a dark color and a bright orange to make the nose. Then I'm just gonna hand freehand the mouth and use that same black paint. And now we're gonna take some red paint, mix it with white. I'm using the Red Crimson Chalk Paint by Waverly from Walmart. I want this video to be things that are accessible to you all and that you may have in your stash. Now I really wanted to use some sparkly pink paint that I had, but I'm, I'm trying to use minimal products and show in this video that you don't have to have expensive products to do this. I should have done these cheeks first and then painted my mouth on, but I didn't, so now I'm going back and fixing my mouth. This next step will be taking some of that white chalk paint and mixing it with water until it's really, really thin because we're just gonna take that paintbrush and I just flick it a little bit and get those uh, white splatters all over both of these jars. We're gonna let those dry and I'm gonna work on these lids. Now, the ring, neither, let's well, see, neither one of these rings actually came with these jars. This is a very large wide mouth ring that I knew would fit the square jar. And the other one is just a regular ring from a canning jar and it fits the pickle jar. So I'm taking this uh, bronze or, I think it's bronze, um, ink pad and just going around the edge of this to give it a little bit of that bronze color, almost a rust color. If you don't have bronze in an ink pad, you can use bronze paint or you can use just a brownish red paint to do this with. I do show you later on, we're gonna do some rust looking color with just some paint coming up. So you don't have to have this ink pad, I just wanna let you know that. So this large ring doesn't quite fit this jar. It moves a little bit. Like I said, it's not the original lid or ring for it, but I didn't want to put the lid back on this jar. I wanted just an open ring so you could put, you know, florals down in the jar or whatever, or suckers sticking out of it. There's so many things you can do with these jars. You can give them as presents filled with candy, filled with 
body products. So I wanted to leave them open. So because the ring is a little um, larger, I just added some of that uh, Dollar Tree wood glue and some hot glue around it. And then I'm just putting it on there and making sure that it stays on there and then dries like that. And see, it just looks so good on that. And it gives it um, that kind of finished look instead of using maybe twine or something around it. Now I'm just sealing both jars with Big Top before we move on to the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize in advance. This next section, which it's not very long, and I went ahead and left it in because you can see it. It's blurry, but it just is showing me putting some greenery and uh, maybe even get to the berries, but then it clears up pretty quick. I'm gonna add some greenery and some berries just on the outside of the jar over top of the paint. I used hot glue and it seemed to work really well. If you think this may be sit, sitting, setting somewhere that is hot, uh, that would melt the glue, then you know you may wanna use something else, but hot glue in this instant is gonna be fine. This greenery and the berries that I'm gonna be using are from Hobby Lobby clearance last year and from the Dollar Tree. The berries coming up were red ones from the Dollar Tree and last year I painted them all white because I wanted some white ones and I couldn't find any and um, there was no reason because I could just paint them myself. You know, I already had it. So I just went ahead and painted them. Now I've added the berries and the greenery and I did uh, lose some footage apparently because I used some of that black and tan homespun material I got from Hobby Lobby. I had some pieces left from it. You can get just a little quarter of a yard for very cheap just to use for little ribbons from for that from that stuff i fed those little pieces uh through the bell and those bells came from either dollar tree or mighty dollar and then attached the ribbon itself with hot glue to the berries and the greenery i also trimmed out the snowman's faces with some gold metallic paint called pure gold it's folk art and you can get it at walmart you can get it of course at hobby lobby as well but now i'm going to show you guys i've had so many comments about rub and buff and i want to show you how you can just use regular gold metallic paint to get the same effect as rub and buff really what we're going to do with the gold paint is more of like a dry brushing so it gives that rub and buff look because you're just hitting highlights with this gold. Now you can make it a little thicker, just get a little bit more on your paintbrush, but I tend to dip it in the gold and then wipe some of it off before moving on to brushing it on the piece. And I also like to use kind of the side of my brush instead of going straight in with the tip because the side kind of just swipes it on there and gives it more of a haphazard look versus a strong brush stroke. Once I finished these, I did go ahead and add a little bit of glitter to the cheeks of this snowman. You all have to let me know if you like these and maybe if you're going to try these with some jars that's going to be recycled or thrown out anyways. 
This next project, we're going to be using a spaghetti jar and more of that metallic real gold paint. Again, I purchased this from Walmart. I'm going to be mixing this with some baby powder and we're going to be doing uh, something really cute with this tape. But I wanted to let you all know that this was not one of my favorite projects and I felt like I needed to alter it to get it to get me to feel better about it, I guess. Uh, and I want to let you know, not every project that I do as a creator, I'm happy with. I mean, there's a lot of them I'm not. And I feel like it's important for you all to know that after every project, I don't say, I just love how this turned out. I mean, most of the time I do because, you know, it's an inspiration from something that just caught my eye. But this one, I don't know, something was missing, I felt like. Um, and I wasn't going to not include it because I, I mean, I like it, but it definitely felt like at the end, I should have put more effort into it. Okay. I used some washi tape to mask off my tree because that's what I want to be left clear to be able to see through. Now, if you have a cricket and you want to cut a tree out or whatever, it can be a Santa Claus, a reindeer, you know, a, a round ornament, anything, any kind of thing like that then go ahead and use it but like i said i'm trying to use things that are accessible to people that don't want to use anything but you know cost effective products or something they may have on hand all i did with that gold paint and that mixed uh, baby powder was just sponge it on with some daubers that i got from our mighty dollar store for a dollar and now i'm just going to peel that tape off to show the tree opening in the glass now we're going to be using some of this gold and cream twine I got from Hobby Lobby and I think this was around around a dollar and a quarter or a dollar fifty. I'm not sure but it was very cost effective and basically the same price for maybe even cheaper than two of the Dollar Tree twines to get the same amount. You can use the Dollar Tree twines or anything you have. You can use ribbon. I really just wanted to color, cover the rim of this jar to give it something to make it look pretty. And I'm just using hot glue with that. I didn't do full coverage on this jar because when I light the candle or put one of those little um, battery operated candles or tea lights, I wanted to be able to it to show through the jar some. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some of this homespun. I got this, I think I've already told you, from Hobby Lobby. I only got like a quarter of a yard so I could just use it for ribbon. It's very inexpensive, but use whatever you have. You can use ribbon, you can use fabric, you can use recycled shirts uh, or dresses from, you know, your closet, anything like that, that you love the pattern or the colors, keep them, keep the buttons off them. I always say buttons. My mom always taught me to say buttons. All right, so I'm just using hot glue and what we're doing with this fabric, we're going to kind of make a little bit of a ruffle to cover up that uh, text from the spaghetti. You could put uh, florals on here, which I plan to, to cover that up, but I thought that a fabric skirt kind of around that twine would be just so pretty. Once we get that finished, I'm going to go ahead and tie a bow with the tails. I wanted to have a bow. I'm making a, a bow outside of this, but I wanted to make sure that the base of the bow matched this skirting going around the jar top so that it would look, you know, like it flows well. And then I just made a little uh, scrappy bow with some bunch of different fabrics that I have and lace or not laces, but you know, different little things that I picked up along the way. Some ribbons I have bought, but a lot of this has came from just thrifting, which you all know I love to do. So I'm just going to hot glue that on there. If you guys ever feel like you need to use a different glue than hot glue, be my guest. Uh, hot glue, if it does get hot again, it will reactivate. So things that are put on doors outside in the heat, hot glue is not the best long-term hold. What I'm doing here is just gluing some of those uh, pieces to the edge here so that the bow's just not just sticking out from the item and it shows like it's coming off of the item and a part of it as well. I pulled out my jar buttons and I thought that we would add a button to this in the center. I have some large, this large wood buttons and yes, these came off of a coat or something that was uh, damaged and headed for the trash. 
and I recycled some of the items off of it, especially things like zipper pulls. Those can be awesome in mixed media. So I always try to get um, things that look really different and neat off of clothing. All right, so I'm taking that hot glue and making a very thin tip to fit through the button because I like for my buttons to seem like they have been sewed on. So I just feed it through uh, into an X shape and then glue, cut off the excess and then either tie it. Uh, but in this case, I'm gluing it because I don't want the back of it to be really bulky with a tie. So I'm just gonna glue the edges of the ribbon that's left after I cut it off. I'm gonna glue it flat to the back of that button. I did go back and add some of that same twine around the bottom rim of the jar to cover some more text that was showing like the ounces of the spaghetti. And I thought that it really gave it a pulled together look. You all have to let me know what you think of this one in the comment section below. Any suggestions would be wonderful. We are next using some cans. I've been saving cans to make wall pocket or can pockets. And the ones that you can't smash with those weird bottoms, I have saved those to use just as a can. Now I pulled out some of my paper that um, I've had for a while. You can print off free papers offline. The Graphics Fairy has tons of Christmas patterns that doesn't cost you anything and music papers. I'm going to be using some free music papers that I printed off on these some of these projects and I will link those and the Graphics Fairy link in the description box below so that you can also have free paper items. I am using stuff that I've had in my stash for a very long time. However, the music paper I printed off myself just on a plain white copy paper. I did paint one can with that black chalk paint, folk art, and then the other can is uh, the sheepskin from folk art. Again, you can get the Waverly chalk paint in similar colors at Walmart, or you can get both of these, I think, and definitely folk art at Hobby Lobby, and they run 40 to 50% off of their paints every two weeks. So make sure you don't miss out on that 40 to 50% off. We're just gonna be using hot glue again. Like I said, if you have a different preference, please feel free to use that. I printed off these Joy to the Worlds in different sizes. On your printer, it will ask you if you want more than one copy per page, uh, not additional copies like of the whole page, but if you look below the printer settings, it will say how many copies per page. And I just did four, six, eight different sizes so that I would be able to use them in this project. And this is a vintage looking joy to the world. So I thought it fit my style perfectly. Now I'm just cutting these out to fit the fronts of these cans. Once we cover them with the plaid or tartan papers, we're going to be adding this to them. I am using some of that Dollar Tree glue as well. And my paper was not long enough, so I'm just using the scraps. It's going to be in the back of the can. I am not worried about it. Once it gets finished, it's really not that noticeable. You could put it on the front and cover with the joy to the world or the music, but I didn't. I'm not sure why I didn't. I guess I just wasn't thinking about it. And just know that these items definitely can be repurposed for your own decor or you can sell these. People will buy handmade stuff. They do not have to be perfect. And if not, you can gift them. People love this kind of thing because they can just put all kinds of stuff in it. We're going to use these to hold little snowmen and trees and you'll see that in the photos coming up. I'm going to go ahead and add my... Uh, so first I do trim the edges of the bottom of this paper off with scissors and just made sure that those edges were glued to, for a finished look. I'm gonna go around my joy to the world with just some paint that was on my brush already. I stick my paint brushes in little plastic bags while I'm using them because it keeps them moist until I need them for the next part of the project or the next project. Uh, and it saves me from dirty and so many. Um, but anyways, I'm just using what paint was on there. I thought going around that with a little bit of black would really tie this in with these papers. To attach this paper, we're just using that good old fashioned glue stick. You can get these glue sticks from the Dollar Tree. This is the brand that I really like and I had it on hand, but I have used the Dollar Tree. They will work perfect for something like this. 
I thought I would go ahead and add something around the rim of these cans and I'd pulled this rope off of something that I thrifted and I saved it. It was about eight inch long pieces and I couldn't throw it away and they had some tied places on them so I just cut it cut those it parts that was tied or glued together off and salvaged this and I thought this creamy white would really just pop against those colors plus go with that uh, sheet music on the front. Now I just use hot glue for this and like I said it just kind of ties off the rim of this can. I am not going to be selling these cans but if I was I would paint the bottoms black and the insides black just to give them a clean look. So don't forget that you know if you are going to sell handmade items people know they're handmade and they expect them to be not perfect. They want them to look handmade but you know they also want them to be finished so this would definitely have been better if I would have painted down on the inside and then the bottoms but like I said I'm just going to use them in my home decor I will be putting some of these in my booth but not these little cans I just love them we're just going to add a little bow to these and uh, a little pine cone with some greenery and finish these off now there's a lot of things you can do to these but I just did a little simplistic kind of at the top of the music to highlight the joy to the world music. The back of the pine cones are more at a peak so I just take my scissors or nippers and just cut that off to make it have a flat back so it'll um, look better on the piece and lay on it better and then with the greenery you just do the same thing you make them you cut little pieces off of them to make it look like mini greenery. You all will have to let me know in the comments below what you think about these and if you love making cans over. I just think they're so cute and just so easy. See, I just put a little tree in that one and then we just used a little snowman and some berries on the top of that one. I did put some paper in the bottom of it to hold that up. Our next project is Truly Trash. This is a lid from a box uh, that had some jewelry in it that I bought in a big lot of jewelry to resell in my booth. So we're gonna use it and make a little Christmas ornament vignette. First, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this with some of that white chalk paint. I'm giving it a thick coat because there are some debossed hearts on this and pattern and I don't want that to show up through my paint. Once we let that dry thoroughly, I'm gonna go ahead and add some paint to tone this down. And this is where we're gonna be using some of that gold to use kind of like rub and buff. And then also I wanted to tone down the white and I was thinking about using some brown paint, but then I decided that I would just give it a wash of green. And so I have that um, green chalk paint. I've had this stuff for years and it's still almost full. I just have used other things and really not gotten to it, but this you can purchase at Walmart. Um, I forget what the color is, but it's Waverly, and they do sell it um, at Walmart and I think at also um, Hobby Lobby and other craft stores. So I'm just taking some water and some of that green paint, and like I said, making it more of a wash so you can still see the uh, white. I went ahead it. and grabbed a baby wipe or paper towel to see if I just wanted to kind of pat it and give it less of a brush stroke look and tone it down itself too. This was an experiment. I mean, I've done washes before, but I wasn't sure how green I really wanted this box. And I knew I just wanted it a little bit green. Um, and it doesn't really show up in the pictures, but you can see it in person. Um, and it definitely changed the color. I am drying this some because I want it to be a little bit dry and not wet because we're going to go ahead and go around the inside rim of this as well with that green wash. Next we're going to go ahead and take that printable and I need to cut it smaller to fit inside of this box. I'm going to outline the back of it. Now you could use the back side of this box as well uh, to make something off of and just leave the back open or you could put something on the back and do the, the inside, but we're just gonna do the inside, and so now I'm just gonna mark this paper and then cut it down to fit the inside of now this box. Now that we've got that cut down to size, we're just gonna use some glue stick to glue this on the inside of our box. This was one of the printables. I didn't show this one, I don't think, in the beginning. Maybe I did, but 
It has a green tint to the paper, like a monotone green and just cream. And I thought that that green around the box would go really cute with this. And I love the vintage Jingle Bells. Like I said, I'll have this linked in the description box below so that if you want to print some of these off and use them for projects, they don't cost you anything. Now we're just going to add some little items inside of here. I'm using one of these little mini Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree. I've had these for a while. I'm not sure if it was last Christmas or the Christmas before that I bought some. I'm just going to put two, one on each end, and then do a little scene in the middle. I have a cute little cookie cutter that's in the shape of the house, and we're going to use that as our centerpiece and add some more cute little items We're going to be using hot glue and wood glue to attach these to this piece. I want to go ahead and add something to the very top of this just to kind of balance it out. I really struggled with leaving all of that background open in between the bottom and the top. However, it does show the song and that's the whole point of this. So I'm not going to put anything on that. I did add some little gold flowers and that pine cone. And now we're taking our gold paint to kind of use it like I do with rub and buff to give a little bit of gold all around that and on the insides to blend in with the gold flowers. Now I couldn't pass up on adding some sparkle to this. So what I've done here is taken a bag of that, I don't know, snow, fake snow from the Dollar Tree and put it in a little shaker bottle and just um, added it on there. I put some hot glue down first and then I added it on there and smashed it into the hot glue and added some on the top of that house. I am sorry about the angle of this um, video in some instances. I was trying to get in very close and then just got closer to myself and out of the frame. Um, I don't know. I've been hitting my camera with my head. You all, it's been a struggle. And my hot glue gun is on its last leg, so I have ordered a new one. The one I'm using now, the whole tip of it is burnt, and I clean it off, and then it's black, and I don't know. I have a small one, but I don't like it as well, so I ordered a large one similar to this yellow one that has the high and low temp and takes the large sticks. I'm showing you here the little tool, the pink tool I'm using, which you can't see because it's out of frame. I'm just using that. It's from the Dollar Tree. They're just $1.25. Uh, this one was only a dollar because I've had it forever, so it was before they went up. And I'm just poking a hole big enough down in this, which I should have done before I added the pine cone and the flowers, but I didn't. So now I'm struggling, and I'm going to get that hole in there and then add some string. That's going to be my hanger for this, so it can hang off of a tree. We're just going to use some of that twine, the golden cream, and I did use hot glue to make it have better a better point to pull through there. I'm going to tie a knot so that it does not come back through the hole um, to hold it on. And then we're going to tie a loop, a little loop at the top. And I was worried it was going to be too little because I didn't really put enough string on there. But once I tied it and took photos, it was fine. It hung on the tree just fine. But you could also put a bow on the top of this. This That would be really cute. I might do that later. This next project is a baby jar. You all, this thing turns out so cute. I have another one and I just didn't have time to do two, but I'm taking a base off of one of these large Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree. I used the trees for something else, but I kept the bases. And now I'm just gonna stick one of those little mini trees down in that. The reason is because we're gonna put some snow down in here and we need that tree to be taller or tall enough so the snow will not cover it. So this worked out perfect. I'm going to use hot glue on this uh, to stick it to the bottom of that glass jar. But I do go back and put some of that tight bond because hot glue just doesn't stick well to glass permanently. You could also use that 
um, fix it all glue from the Dollar Tree. I just went ahead and have tight bonds, so I just used it. And now I'm going to attach my little deer to the base of that Christmas tree and kind of lean it against it with that tight bond and a little bit of hot glue. We've added some of that Dollar Tree snow, and now we're going to cut out these little tiny ones, well, just one of them, of Joy to the World, and we're going to stick it behind our scene. I went ahead and had to cut some of the bottom off to make it fit, but you wouldn't have seen it anyways with the snow covering it. I went ahead and added some twine and a little jewel to the top, and I really think this is my favorite one. What do you all think about this one? Our next project is the lids from those jars that we just made over. I love these cute little lids, and of course I scoured Pinterest and found a few inspirations of what to um, use these for, so we're going to use them for ornaments. We're going to give these a sort of like an old rusty look, not just in places, but the whole lid. So I pulled out a couple of colors that um, kind of mimics dark brownish rusty look, and then we're going to use the cinnamon technique to kind of finish it off. We're going to be using this uh, Ceramco Brown Iron Oxide color. You can use any color of brown paint that kind of looks like a mild uh, chocolate. And we're going to let these dry somewhat, not all the way, but um, we're going to let this dry after we put this full coat on these. Now I'm using a sponge dauber because it gives it almost a crumbly look, kind of like rust looks when it oxides or oxide, oxidates. So that's why I'm using the sponge versus a paintbrush. Now that these have dried somewhat, we're going to go in with that, I think it is spiced berry, uh, apple barrel paint, and some cinnamon. So as I put that uh, spiced berry or spiced color on, I'm just adding the, um, the cinnamon to it so it'll stick to the wet. And I'm going back in with some of that uh, oxide color too, and I'm just going to mix it. I'm going to go in with the cinnamon and the two different colors until I get it the way that I like. I'm just trying to use the cinnamon that is on that paper instead of sprinkling more on. I mean, I will use the sprinkles on if I need to, but you guys know how I like to do. I like to just smash stuff on there until I get it the way that I want it. I don't know why, but it just really seems to work and I love how these turned out. Now these are dry and I have sealed these. You can use Mod Podge to seal these in. They make Mod Podge matte, which does still give it a little bit of a sheen, but it's definitely not as glossy as the gloss. What I'm gonna do here is I've went through some of my black and white photos that I've just collected um, over time from here and there. These are not family photos. These are just ones that I've gotten in thrifted or lots. And I thought I would pick out some that would look, you know, kind of wintry or Christmassy. So we're going to start out with this one that has snow and just some bare trees. I'm just um, tr going around this with a pen so that I can kind of get an idea of what size I'm going to need. And just cut it out to go on the inside. Now, I do have to end up trimming this back quite a bit more to get it to fit on the inside. But it works fine. And I'm doing that with the rest of these. If you don't have black and white photos just that you've picked up from somewhere, you can print off black and white photos offline of anything. You can scan your own photos and turn them into black and white, especially of your children or grandchildren. I really just wanted some scenery for the backgrounds, but I do use that little now that we set have with all the kids of our photos cut out as one of them. I'm just going to well. use some of that wood glue from Dollar Tree and some hot glue because I, the hot glue, I'm worried because over time, you know, hot glue can, I don't know that it breaks down, but it can detach with age. And I want to make sure these will last for years to come as Christmas ornaments. So I'm just putting all of the pictures on the lids on the inside. 
and you can see where I painted or did that cinnamon or that rust I'm sorry it's very late so my words are not coming out good but you can see where I made sure that that color the rusty color is gonna show around the the photos and didn't leave any white on the lids what I did was I got a lot of my little miniature things out a lot of these items are from Dollar Tree some of them are from the designer Tim Holtz I have a lot of his stuff in my stash just from collecting over a few years and I thought that I would use some of the these items like I said I'm trying to use what's in my stash these are not new from this year or last Christmas these are from probably the Christmas before I don't really end up using a lot of this stuff but it's so fun to get all my little supplies together and put them in cute little wood containers or any containers and just have them sitting there to inspire me of what to use on small projects like this. So that's what I did. I just got out my little stuff and it's sitting there and if I want to use it I can but we don't use a lot of this. Really it was more for the fun of it for me. I think collecting supplies is just as fun as using them. All right, so now we're going to be using some of that rope that I told you all earlier that I took off of a thrifted item and I didn't throw it away because I kind of want to trim out these photos. They're not really perfect on the inside. Now, they don't have to be, but I wanted them to look a little neater. So I thought this uh, cream colored rope would look really pretty on these two little and ones. And then we're going to use the brown leather rope on the larger ones. Now that we've got them, these lined up with what uh, the rope that we're going to be using, I'm going to go ahead and start embellishing these by using some of the greenery and some of these cute little items that I have sitting here in these cute little trays. For the hangers, we're just going to use some of that cream and gold twine and some painter's cloth or canvas cloth as the uh, kind of holders over top and just some hot glue for the backs of these. Now you could poke a hole in these and you know put a wire. There's lots of ways you can use to attach these, but I'm just going to do it this way and they'll hang just fine off of a tree. This next one, the rope. Uh, the rope where it meets is kind of on the side and I thought you know I'm just going to cover that up but it'll also be neat that I can put this on the side and I do either do the side the top or maybe bottom and top they don't all have to be a certain way you can put the embellishments wherever you like on them really we're showcasing the photos and then adding the little embellishments to give them that more of a Christmas feel.
So I finished the rest of them off off camera because this video is probably going to be close to an hour long at this point. But I had to come back on here and show you how I'm using that gold paint to do our favorite sort of rub and buff mimicking with this. You all will have to let me know what you think about these. I do love how these turned out and they were so much fun to make. This next project is a paper towel holder that I went ahead and plant, painted, planted, oh, it's late, painted with white chalk paint. I wasn't sure if I needed to paint them and I really don't think I did, um, but they may have shown through the fabric that I'm going to be using. If you don't have this, you can also use toilet paper rolls. I've been saving these for this video and I love how these turned out. I didn't know what direction I was going, but I went through my fabric and I found this nice piece that was uh, really thin and I thought it would make great for, it can be either Christmas crackers, which is kind of a British thing. You pull the ends and stuff pops out of them like little surprises, kind of like Cracker Jacks, or it can be considered just candy like here in the U.S., but what I'm doing is I'm using this fabric to cover these and I'm just using hot glue and then we're going to tie both of the ends with some twine just to get them in the shape that I want them. And then we're going to use some ribbon. I did not have that planned, but I started looking through my stash and thought that the ribbon would be perfect for this. The first ribbon that we're going to use, I bought this year before last at Hobby Lobby, but they, I noticed they had it this year. This ribbon is so beautiful. It's a beautiful green, um, like a pine color with this coppery sparkles that looks, I think they're supposed to mimic pine cones. And I decided that I was going to put one ribbon strip on each end and leave a little gap in the middle. And then we're going to use some Dollar Tree ribbon to go in the middle. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and put the other ribbon on the other two uh, before we trim them out. Now, I did buy this ribbon this year about, mm, maybe about three weeks ago at Hobby Lobby. I was really looking for some green, you know, I know I'm still crushing on green ribbon for the holiday season. And I found this and I love the color and the deer and just the whole um, kind of cross stitch pattern that's on it. So we're just going to wrap one strip in the center of this and then hot glue that. What I want you all to think about when it comes to these paper towel or toilet paper rolls, use what you have. Find some fabric that would be okay to use with maybe some trimmings that look like Christmas or reds and greens. Um, any of the Dollar Tree ribbons, you don't have to use ribbon. You can use paint and you can put polka dots on these. You can use fa other fabric and tear strips. There's so many things you can do with these, you all. Don't hesitate to save them and use them. Now I'm using this really beautiful sagey green. I bought this the same year that I bought not the deer ribbon, but the ribbon with the little coppery accents. And I've used quite a bit of it. And this has lasted me for like two years. And get this when it's 50% off at Hobby Lobby or on clearance. Now this one, we're just doing the same as we did with the deer and putting the one strip down the middle. You can also use wrapping paper. You can use brown paper. You can use newspaper. Um... You can use the paper that comes in your packages to wrap these with and then draw designs on them, stamp them with stamps. The It's endless. I'm telling you, this just popped into my head, but there's so many things you could use. All right, so now we're going to use that beautiful cream with the gold down the center ribbon from Dollar Tree. And it is gold and the accents on this is copper, but copper and gold just go so well together. 
So we're just going to wrap that strip around and glue it like we did the other two pieces of ribbon. I'm keeping all my seams on one area like at the back and um, that way if you want to hang these or lay them you can just make sure that goes to the back and the the front without I decided seams to take the brown show. twine off of these and use that beautiful cream and gold ribbon or not ribbon but twine on them and it just looked perfect the twine was fine like I said use whatever you have you know if you've got the Dollar Tree twine use that but this golden cream has had my heart this season so far, so we're just going to use that, and it plays so well with those ribbons. For the kind of ombre green, sage green ribbon, I have this beautiful Merry Christmas vintage ribbon. It's almost like a taffeta. It's very sheer and has this beautiful gold stitching, and we're just going to put Christmas in the center of this one and um well maybe it doesn't say merry christmas but i know it says christmas so we're just going to make sure it says christmas on the front of this and do the same thing with the glue and it has the beautiful green or beautiful little gold trees oh i love this ribbon i've not used it i got this in a lot of thrifted vintage christmas items so i'm so excited to be able to use this on this one for this last one with the deer ribbon, I just changed out the twines and I did not add anything extra because there was enough pattern on this deer ribbon to suffice and it did not need anything else in my eyes. Now you all will have to let me know what you think about these. I think these would be great little ornament exchanged gifts or I think they would sell very well for the holiday season. For this last one, this is really a true trash to treasure. My husband, we put a brand new toilet, if I must say, in one of our bathrooms. And the box that it came out of had this gorgeous thick cardboard and I thought, I'm going to save some of that because I liked the edges of it. You could really see, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It has this honeycomb pattern and very thick, I guess, to protect the porcelain. But I love the edges that it had that honeycomb pattern. And when I was looking at the pieces, all I could see was a door or a window here. So I knew I had to save it for a project. And I knew that I wanted to use some cardboard in this project. So this is the piece that... I decided to use now what I'm going to be doing with this is the other little box I had a lot of those left from my DIY paint shipment and I just broke them down and stored them and we're going to use a piece of that for the backing and we're going to make this little Santa house slash window and we're going to use this little piece of ephemera I think this is from the Tim Holtz ephemera pack for Christmas and these frames are from Timu. You can print off stuff just like this offline for free, but I already had this in my stash, so I'm going to be using it. I'm just kind of measuring up to decide where I want my Santa, how he's going to fit in that window or doorway, and then we're going to do some cutting down of this piece. Once I kind of get this cut down to the way that I want it, I am going to go ahead and use just my glue stick to glue it in place so that I'll know how I need to glue my other window or piece on top of this. I decided since this is cardboard that I wanted some of that honeycomb pattern to show through like how when stucco chips off of brick I just kind of had this in my head and so I just started ripping some of the parts off and I wanted this to look very distressed and rustic because it is cardboard. I mean, it is what it is. It's going to be a very rough ornament that is very handmade out of cheap material. So I did rip some off near the door and I went ahead and glued that back on because I felt like it had too much of a hole or opening. Now I'm just giving this a good coat of this uh, Waverly. No, it's folk art. Yeah, I think it's folk art uh, in the color sheep skin. And then we're going to do some gluing down and cutting down as well. 
Our little house has a place for a chimney, so we're going to use a piece that I had cut, already painted, but cut off on that edge, as you saw a little bit earlier, and we're just going to hot glue that down too. Once I got that glued down, I was thinking about the opening of the Santa, and although I do love that frame, I wanted to trim that inside out a little bit more, and I found this little trim that I had in my stash. This is also a Tim Holtz product, product that I've had for a very long time. You all don't, don't know how happy it is that I'm getting to use some of this stuff. So I really want to tone this color back some and make this look more like a little aged uh, house. So I pulled that oxide paint back out and I'm going to mix it with some water. We're going to use this kind of like a wash or sometimes people will use glazes like this. We're using paint to do the color uh, or to do this technique. Now it looked very red to me once I did this so I thought I would add some gray to it so I just grabbed some of my gray paint. Um, I think this might be granite and mixed it in with that color to get the color that I wanted. I'm just taking that paintbrush and going all over the areas that I want to darken up kind of outlining the edges of the house and that bottom to kind of make it grounded like then that's an entrance versus just you know a wall there and then I'm going to grab a paper towel or baby wipe and kind of smudge it and just rub it all over the face of the house. I am kind of going over some of those edges and the sides with it too just to tone them back as well. Once we finish that we are going to do our gold on here just like we have been with about all the other projects. I'm just kind of doing the same thing, outlining things, and then going over the whole thing in just spotty areas to give it a little touch of glimmer. Once we get that finished, now you can kind of see it has a little bit of an aged look. We're going to add some greenery and uh, I think some berries down in that little area to fill that in and help showcase our little Santa. Now, I don't use a lot of text or words in my creations, but I really love this little peace on earth sign that came out of some of my Tim Holtz stuff. You're going to get these in packs that has a lot of sayings, and they have this cardboard on the back that you can peel off and make the pieces thinner. I don't like the full thickness, so I just peeled some of that off, and I found this little numbers tab, and I thought we would hang that off of our chimney. Now you could put some rivets in that or little beads to cover the holes, but I just left it the way it was. I thought it was fine that way. Now you all will have to let me know what you think about this, um, this one as well. I went ahead and added a little gold to those and a hanger on the back. I really do hope you all love this video and I hope that you like all of the cost effective reasonable ways to use paint and things that are accessible and pretty cheap to make things you can sell, you can gift, or you can just keep for yourself. Now, not all of these are high-end uh, projects, but they're not meant to be. This is meant to show or to showcase how you can recycle items to use in your creations and in your gift giving and selling. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.